Land Acknowledgement As we gather together, we acknowledge the sacred land on which we reside. It has been a site of human activity for 15,000 years. This land is the territory of the Huron-Wendat and Petun First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. The territory was the subject of Dish with One Spoon Wampoon Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and Confederacy of the Ojibwe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Today, this gathering place is still the home of many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community on this territory. We are also mindful of broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. Last but certainly not least, we acknowledge the people of African descent who were brought here against their own will or in search of a safe place to live their lives and raise their children. Reconnaissance des terres. En nous rassemblant, nous reconnaissons la terre sacrée sur laquelle nous résidons. C'est un site d'activité humaine depuis 15 000 ans. Cette terre est le territoire des Premières Nations, Huron, Wandat et Petun, les Séniques et plus récemment les Mississauga de la Crédit, de la rivière Crédit. Le territoire était sujet de l'alliance de la ceinture Wampun plat avec cuillère, une accord entre la Confédération Iroquois et Confédération des Ojibwe et des nations alliées à partager et à prendre soin pacifiquement pour les ressources autour des Grands Lacs. Aujourd'hui, ce lieu de rassemblement est toujours le foyer de nombreux peuples autochtones de toute l'île de la Tortue et Nous sommes reconnaissants d'avoir la possibilité de travailler dans la communauté sur ce territoire. Nous sommes également conscients des alliances brisées et de la nécessité de nous efforcer de guérir toutes nos relations. Dernier point, mais non le moindre, nous remercions les personnes d'ascendance africaine qui ont été amenées ici contre leur volonté, ou à la recherche d'un endroit sûr où vivre leur vie et élever leurs enfants. Hey, good afternoon or good morning, wherever you are joining from. My name is Moi Fong. I am your host for this afternoon at the BBPA AAP Ask a Professional. We meet here pretty much every Wednesday to speak with industry professionals like the one you'll hear from Charles Buchanan. Uh, how is everyone doing today? How is there, I want to hear you in the chat. I know it's January, what, what's February 1st, happy new month. Let me say this, happy new month. We're kickstarting Black History Month, but of course Black History is, we know it's all year round. But I do wanna hear from all of you who's joined us today. Uh, let me know where you're joining from and how are you feeling today? It's February the 1st, 2023. How are you feeling today? We wanna hear from you. Sarah says, happy Black Brilliance 24 7th month. Yes, joining from Ottawa. Pleased to have you. Pleased to have you, Sarah. I'm looking for my chat here. Okay, great. And we have uh, Bonjour from beautiful Montreal. Teresa, very nice. And Victoria, we know you're out in, Cal uh, in North Carolina. Good to have everyone here. Well, thank you so much for joining. So today we're going to be discussing a very, very important topic, right? Technology. I mean, who's into technology these days? <laughs> Except Charles. <laughs> technology is a very important, we see the world is changing. It's a very important topic for us to really discover and to really embrace. I know some of us, I'm old school. I always say this, Charles, you don't know this, but I always say that I look young, but I'm very, very old school, right? So when it comes to technology, it, it takes me a little bit longer to embrace it, but I have started to, and I'm glad that I did. And I, I, without further ado, what I will do is I just invite Charles to the virtual stage with me, and I'll go through his bio a little bit, and then we'll hear from him just to share with us a little bit more about what he does. So we know Charles, he's the CEO and the founder of Technology Helps. He's a committed leader in the tech sector and passionate contributor of the community. 
Charles spent nearly three decades in corporate technology leadership, management, consulting, and entrepreneurship with senior roles at Sunpour, Energy, Deloitte, Oracle, and MNP, and Royal LePage. As the principal of a management consultancy, consultancy firm, he has provided expert advice and implemented large-scale technology solutions for clients like Bell, Enterplus, TELUS, the government of Alberta, and the Canada Post. I'm going to leave it right there. We know that he's also served in the uh, not-for-profit uh, sector. And, um, you know, Charles, we know that your res your uh, bio, is, as, as brilliant as, as it sounds, we know it doesn't really do you much justice. So I'm going to invite you just to share with us a little bit more about what you really do as it pertains to technology, and then you can introduce our topic. Okay. Yeah, thanks, boy. Um, can everyone hear me? Just uh, give me a we thumbs up, boy. Okay. We can hear. Oh, excellent. Yes. Yeah. So no. Yeah. I'm. I'm excited to be here. It's a uh, Happy Black History Month. It's. Uh, you know. We're. It's. We've got a lot planned out here. So, for people who don't know, um, I'm talking to you from Treaty Seven Territory, Métis Region Three. That's uh, otherwise known as Mackenzie's or Calgary, Alberta, Canada. So um, I've been here for quite a while. I mean for. A little bit of background, I was born in Jamaica, spent some time in Toronto, and I've been out in the prairies and joined the mountains for the last 30 years. So that's, uh, it's so yes, and boy, uh, you're not the only one who's who's old and old school around here, but. I never uh, said for, old, I never said old. Uh, said oh, old. yeah, oh yeah, so, um, okay, fine. <laughs> this, yeah, this could get, uh, this could get ugly. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, so I'm, yeah, first and foremost, I am, I am tech, I'm very tech. And it, and now and, and we'll walk through what that means as we go forward. But yeah, I'm a technologist, and and a bit, and, and, and what I do now is I do, I am I, I I'm at a stage in life where I could do technology things for good. So I run an organization called Technology Helps, which focus which has which is a purpose driven organization that's focused on ending technology poverty, and. Uh, and we're we've I've been at this work for seven years, and there's a long story around that. But the impetus of it was reaching a point where making money and making a difference, where the pendulum shifted from making money to making a difference. And uh, and 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 over time, you realize that you can do both. So technology helps. We 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 work with organizations that are doing good in community, which is social good organizations, as well as under historically underrepresented. Uh, businesses and people, which would be vulnerable people in community, and particular, and definitely what what fits squarely into that are black people and black businesses. So, so that is what we do. We are we're focused on technology poverty, and one would say, why is poverty eradication an important thing? Like, what is this thing called technology poverty? And uh, so today's talk, I'm gonna. There are some things that, that, that there are some disclaimers I'll put out there. You will be hearing some secrets of 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 my business of our business, and you'll also be hearing things that are slightly personal in nature. And uh, and I want this to be a conversation, so I will be talking about a number of topics. And but this is not just about experts coming and just talking at you. I want I want to be I want to be speaking with you, and I want to be working side by side with you to get you to. So to see technology differently. So my goal for today, and there are no slides, so do not expect to fall asleep and wake up and come back and it's like, okay, yeah, I'm not gonna read slides to you because um, one of my basic assumptions is that you can all read. So I'm not gonna read you any slides. And I'm also not going to, uh, and, and there are, some, there are some, some graphics I could display, but that's not the point. What I want out of this conversation and what I think would be most valuable to, to, to black to black entrepreneurs is is to think differently. So what I want at the end of this conversation is I want my goal is that you that I've shifted your mindset just a little bit towards towards technology. I'm not going to turn you into technologists. This is a conversation about the why technology is important to our community and our businesses, not the and there will be subsequent conversations in a series about the specifics of the how. AI, cybersecurity, specific tools and technologies. Those are things that you could you could acquire that anywhere. That's not necessarily the best best use of that's not the best use of time with me. And that's not necessarily the best use of my platform as someone who's I'm not I haven't I won't say I've been successful because success is it's it's a journey, but for 
for all the work I've put in and the, and the, the inroads I've made, I do not believe that the best use of, the best I can impart is tips and tools. It's more about the, let's talk about how technology, the role technology plays in our world and the role and how as black people and black businesses and black entrepreneurs, we can, we should harness this to level the playing field. So the technology poverty is actually, is, is really the, I mean, and it's, it's a, it's a term that I, I'm not going to say we coined it because I don't know if we did or not, because it's just two words put together. But when I started looking at the state of, of technology in, say, the nonprofit sector and community serving organizations, what I saw in early 2016, when we start, when I started this, was businesses and people who are not effectively participating or not participating fully in society in, in the way that the world is. So the world had become completely and it hadn't, it didn't happen overnight. I mean, it did. There have been some really big jumps in, in the technology landscape over the last few years that have changed a lot of things. But they, what I saw were people and business and uh, organizations falling behind in, uh, because they're not keeping up with technology. And uh, not keeping up means that they didn't have the, and, and it comes from a number of very basic things. One is they didn't have the skills. They just didn't know what to do. They also didn't have the money and uh, and things were changing and they could not access things and they were they could not deliver good services. They could not, so they were on the margins. And when I look around, I realized that, wait a minute, this is kind of like, this is what poor people deal with. This is poverty and it's poverty at a level of, and it's poverty around technology, almost the same as food insecurity or other forms of poverty. And so it, and it was very, very similar to other forms of poverty. So as I dug into the problem and that, and the digging into the problem evolved as I, as, as I started this crazy journey of, of uh, quitting my job in corporate and starting a, 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 a company with no business plan, no nothing, with nothing but a purpose, I'm going to solve this problem. As I dug into the problem, I realized that, yeah, this is actually a systemic problem. And it's and, it, and and it's actually cyclical, like the cycle of poverty, and and it starts with, it starts economically. It starts with you know, like in the nonprofit sector or whatever, in businesses even, it starts with constraints on funding. And for a for a charitable organization, it could be what your funders or your investors say you should do with your money. With uh, with, with an entrepreneur or a business, it would be. It would be the, the, your availability of funds. Like, I mean, and you, I'm sure you've been in other workshops, you've had other conversations about the challenges businesses face or our businesses face with getting, getting financing, having a business plan, being taken seriously. So there is that constraint. So it starts off with an economic constraint and that translates to natural underinvestment in something that's critical to your business. So you go and you, you know, you get your, you know, get a friend of a friend to whip a website or you just do something basic here and there. You could, if you, it's not even cutting corners. Sometimes you just don't have the ability to do it. You also don't know what to do. And you also don't have the luxury of looking at your business holistically and saying, these are the technologies I need. And this is what I need to do. And this is how I'm going to, I'm going to construct it and set it up and move it across. And this is how the business is going to grow. You don't have that. So you underinvest and that underinvestment leads to naturally you don't have the supports so you don't have the technologies or the tools. So it leads to, to technology actually becomes more of a barrier and a pain than it does actually become a, the, an asset or an, a help to your business. So you end up having, you know, compromised business results and you end up having, you know, broken processes, you end up having inefficient inefficiency. And that leads to naturally leads to poor performance. And then that poor performance doesn't really get you to the next level. And then you're starting all over. So it's more like a death spiral of technology poverty than it is actually just a cycle. So it goes around and around. So that, but the thing is the cycle can be broken in a number of, number of different places. And one of those things is around the, is around knowledge. So, so I'm just gonna basically just, uh, you know, Pause there for a second and just let people, if anyone has any questions about technology poverty, because it's technology poverty is a, is a thing, it's a bad thing, but it's not. It's it's something that we have to pull our way out of, and we are good at pulling our way out of this. Any any questions there, uh, thank, Moy? Thank, let me just first say thank you so much, Charles, for sharing that. Uh, you said some really important things. I loved what you talked about. Um, well, of course, technology poverty. I mean, if we looked at it in that way, then I think we would be we would 
we would we would approach it a, a little bit more different, right? Um, let me just invite the folks that have joined us. I don't want to forget you because it's important. We want you to hear from you. Um, Charles said that you didn't necessarily need notes and pa uh, pads and pens, but please come with your questions because the world is ever evolving. It's moving faster than we want it to. And uh, it's either we jump on the technology wagon, or wagon, sorry, or we we get left behind in business, and that's the bottom line of it. There's no way around it. So here we are speaking with Charles, and for those of you who's just joined us, we're speaking about tech, technology, and the importance of technology, is specifically for Black entrepreneurs. We're doing a series. This is the first part, and uh, we're so happy to have Charles share with us today. So please. Um, I see a few a few of you on camera. Feel free to open your cameras. Feel free to ask questions. Um, this will be an engaging and sort of uh, dialogue, right? So we don't have any slides today, but please feel free to put your hand up. Um, let me know if you have a question. We'll open your mic and uh, and we'll go forth. But thank you so much for that. And I think, um, Charles, the skills, the know-how, I think is what often scares people, you know? So it doesn't matter how much we love entrepreneurship, but I'm the person who loves entrepreneurship. Uh, there are many people, I will embrace technology, but there are many people who won't because it just seems difficult. They don't understand it. They don't have the skill set. And, and what happens is when we are unfamiliar with something, we tend to just shut it off completely. And you're saying, let's not do that <laughs> because it will impact your business. Oh, oh, absolutely not. So thanks, boys. So on, on the skills part, <clears throat> sorry, but I'm, my, the air is very, very dry in Alberta. Like it's uh, it's one of those places where when I moved here, you could just wake up to the sound of your skin cracking. Like it's just like so, like it's crazy dry here. So, so my apologies. But on the skills thing, yes, it's it's really like it's, um, and when it comes to gaining that knowledge, one of the things I would really advocate and strongly suggest is that get a, just do not, there's nothing to fear. It's really, it's like, it's it's not, it's really not hard. Like, I mean, so, and one would say, okay, Charles, yes, it's easy for you to say it's not hard. You're a computer engineer. You, you've been in tech since, you, you, you have no recollection of life before tech, but that's, yeah, that's, it's, but it's almost like, like, yeah, so, so it's, sometimes it's hard for me to comprehend people who don't get it, but it's not that difficult. So this is where I'm going to get a little bit personal about how people could actually learn tech and, uh, and you don't have to be a brilliant scientist or anything. So I'm, yeah, anybody, if you spend more than say 15 minutes with me, you'll hear about my daughters. So I have, I have two daughters and I'm a total girl dad there. And uh, one's an artist and she's currently in the UK with me swearing every day about how the pound is uh, really kicking the crap out of the Canadian dollar. But that's, uh, and my other daughter is not an artist. So, so I, you know, so when she was, uh, so she she went to Queens uh, Queens University. She did engineering. So she she's in first year engineering. It's a common program. So she was doing a program called computing for engineers. And uh, so she called me up one day and said, "I'm doing this 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 program called computing for engineers." And uh, and I, I we're learning this programming language. And I'm like, "Oh, cool!" Because this is a, this is someone who who could not if they you know if, if her computer was unplugged. She might be calling tech support, like I mean, because she would not know that it's the power that's causing it to not have lights on the screen. So, so we're so she she said called me up and said, yeah, we've got this computer for engineer thing happening at this programming language, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. What's uh, it's what do you learn? And I said, oh, I, said, I think it's C or C C plus plus or something. I'm, okay, whatever. So and she said, what's it like? It's like it's well, it's so it's a program, it's a language. It's kind of like Spanish. I'm like, no, it's not like Spanish. And it's like, yeah, but it's just a language and you just learn these words and code, these ways to just kind of say things. And I'm like, yeah, Jada, that's not, that's easy to say, but that's not really how it works. Like, I mean, the language part of it is really just the words you use to tell the computer what to do. So, and I said, have you done any flow charting? Have you really talked about the, the how and the what are you trying to do? And she's like, I don't. I said, what do you mean? I'm like, Okay, it's you're, it's a problem. You're trying to solve a problem, and on and it and the, the words that you use to talk to the computer is just the language the computer uses. It's not what you're trying to do. So what, why don't you think about the problem you're trying to solve? What are you trying to accomplish, from start to finish? So it's like, okay, I'm trying to figure out this thing out. Okay, what? How would you figure that out? And she said, oh, that's just basic logic. It's just you, this is what I want to know. I'm like, yes, and these are the things you know that you have to start the problem solving. These are the steps you want the computer to take. 
And this is the result that you'd like. And this is the things that you want the computer to assist you with to get to, the, to that answer. And she's like, oh, okay, so what happens if you, and these are the scenarios that you could forecast. <clears throat> and she said, what if you forecast, what if there's a scenario that you cannot forecast? I'm like, well, that's called a bug. So your job is to make sure you've got all these scenarios, all the possibilities forecasted and tell the computer to keep doing things. And you have to tell it to stop doing things that will continue and definitely doing things. So um, so, we're, so we we had a little, we had 15 minutes of flow charting and she understood, oh, that's really, and then so she, she came home for Thanksgiving and I, and we have a short golf season here. And I also, yes, I do play a lot of golf. And I canceled all my golf for the last weekend of golf season, sat on the couch waiting to, to do a code camp with this with this, uh, this girl. And uh, she came home, sat there, wasted my weekend, no code camp. She did not mention this programming problem she was having even once. And uh, we're like, okay, fine. I could have been playing golf, but instead I have to be sitting here like dad on call in case there's a programming issue. She went back on Tuesday the day after Thanksgiving. She had her midterm. She, she got a 96 in her midterm. I'm like, oh, okay. So then January comes January. She phones me up and she's like laughing. And like, what do you like? What's so funny? And she said, well, I've decided what kind of engineering I'm going to do. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Okay. And she said, I said, you're going to laugh. I'm like, no, I'm not. It's like, okay, I'm going to do a computer engineering. I'm like, why? It's, and she said, because it's just so straightforward. It's just so, it's just logical. It makes so much sense. And it's like, so yeah. And uh, now this brilliant young woman is a uh, cloud solution architect at Microsoft living right downtown Toronto. And uh, and it's no longer on my payroll. So um, so that's the personal part. And the thing is, you can, tech can be learned. It's like, it's not a hard, it's a, it's not something to be, to be scared of. It's, it, it's 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 really I'm not going to say it's really very straightforward because in a lot of cases it is and learning to code one would say well one should learn to code one should, yes it's important however what's most important is the lot is the logic and the critical thinking that goes into how you how you approach technology what it's like really look at it as what am I trying to get technology to do as opposed to getting caught up in the in, in the mechanics of it or the you know or the details of it the details will come and there are people who are actually very good at the details but that's not the that's not where the most value is the most value is in not being is not being scared of it and being and being more curious about it like it's like okay how does this it's like asking how does this work and it's uh so there's this wall that and and I, and I mean I don't think tech people have done that intentionally or I'm not sure where tech phobia comes from, but it is a real thing where people go, it's, a, but yeah, but now they're, it's, we're, we're engaging with technology every day and it's not that strange. Like, I mean, now we have, you know, like yesterday, Moya and I were talking about, you know, she, she says she does drag and drop uh, programming or whatever. I'm like, yes, that's all you probably need to do because the blocks are there, that the tools are there for you to just know how to it's really about knowing what things do and how to make things and how to assemble things you don't have to be an expert coder in order to leverage technology to your benefit while you drink your water um i i'm going to step in and thank you so much for sharing that inspiring story of your daughter <laughs> Now it makes me want to approach or embrace it a little bit more because like you said, just like most things, it can be learned. It's not, it's not innate, right? We can definitely learn about technology. And I think where the fear comes from, I think it's just fear of the unknown. And I think a lot of the older folks, they tend to shy away because if we see babies that are being born now, they're like, they're technology gurus. <laughs> they know how to function. They know how to operate a computer and so forth. So I, I do thank you for that. Um, no, this is great. And one of the important things that you did say was just was also the knowing. I think with a lot of small business owners specifically, a lot of the times they're not they're not really clear about what it is that they're trying to do. Right. So I think having um, even an expert there that will help them to figure that process out will, will also make it a little bit easier because um, then they'll be able to identify what they need. Right. Because sometimes they don't know there's that gap in not knowing. Um, and then they're not able to identify what they need. Questions, feel free to, to, to put your questions in the chat, put your hands up. We're here to answer them. Uh, we're here till about 1 p.m. And we're, we're like I said, it's uh, he doesn't have a presentation, but he's sharing lots of nuggets, lots of insights. Um, and if there aren't any questions right now, feel free to go ahead with your next point. That would be great. 
Okay. No question. Okay. So, but so the, what? I, what? Something I said. So that that needs to be clear is that I'm not just a what do you call a tech expert. I'm also a black business, a black entrepreneur, right? So our business is very much like, yeah, one was very very much like yours. Like I mean, so we've started off with me quitting my job after a trip to Mexico and just uh, you know scared. I didn't scare my family. They just figured well. Yeah, you're, you're excited about what you're doing. You're going to do it well. So that's happened. Like fast forward several years later, we're, you know, like have a team of, of 20 people spread across the country. And uh, yeah, we actually have one person who lives in Brazil and that uh, we serve clients coast to coast. And we're just making a big splash into the U.S. market in this fiscal year. So that's going to be a, it's 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 an exciting time. But as far as, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we have the, I mean, yeah, we, we have certain advantages as a, as a as a business that's provided what I would call a system of support and a system of security for for deserving organizations and and it's like and it's just the way we think about technology so we we've come at it in a in a way that's just not like it's a lot of our technology is planned and it's important that we look at what are you trying to accomplish as a business and what role can technology play in that? And that's the, and that's the first conversation I have with any organization we engage with and we support. It's like, what are you trying to do as a business? So look at your business different. Like, look at your business. Think about how technology is, is being applied. Like, what are you trying to do? So in our case, we're trying to support other businesses and keep them support. So what do I need to do to support these other businesses? I need to... I, I, and fortunately, at this stage, I can do pretty much everything from my phone because I've we, we have a planned system where I I have our customer information, so I know. So if someone were to call me up now, like a leader of of a major nonprofit we, we're supporting, I would be able to tell who they are because they're in my client database. I would know our 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 service system is is tied to our client system. So I know, do we have any proposals or any work that we've got planned for them? I'll know how many service tickets this person or this organization has been involved with. I could tell right away because our, our financial system is 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 the same on, on the same platform if they've paid their bills or if they're if their bills outstanding. And I could so I would know exactly who I'm talking to. And I could say I could have within seconds know who I'm dealing with and have an engaging conversation. So for, for client serving businesses, when you look at what it is that you do, yes, you, you know, you, you, you manage your accounts, you serve, you provide a service, you, you know, you collect, you, you, you get paid for your services. And then there's some other things that you might do around customer feedback and customer satisfaction. So you really look at it all. It's about where, what, te- what, what, te- what role is technology playing in your business? And then also what kind of business what kind of business is it? So I'll just tell you one, and, and you should always be looking for places where technology could possibly be, be applicable. So another case where one of the things that, that we do as a business, we have to look at how do we how do we maximize our profit or how do we keep our costs down? So one of the things that was was has always been killing a service business that does on-site work as well as remote work is having to go on site, going on site, making deliveries, whatever you, you know, drop making service calls is expensive. And, uh, and, but what, what we're always on the lookout for is somebody in some other industry, not necessarily mine, doing something that could be applicable. Do they have similar, do they have similar processes? So a couple of years ago, in the middle of winter out here, which is which is ugly, really, really, really bad. Our furnace decided that it just didn't want to provide us any service anymore. So we called this this uh, had to call this company. They came in and they installed a new service surf furnace for like a crap load of money in the middle of January. And uh, and then when the serv- when, when the furnace was in, was implemented, I, I I it was supposed to be certified by the gas company. So the gas company said they're going to show up. You know at between nine and noon or something like that in the morning and they called and uh, so I'm sitting there and I got a text message and I'm like what well, okay the text message usually means you know I'm I'm yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be late or I'm going to be there or the technician is going to be there in a few minutes I'm like no there's no technician so I call the guy back and I'm like what do you, are you okay click on this link and I'm like no I'm not going to do that so I called him and he said yeah go ahead click on it so I clicked on the link and it said 
you know, it, are we authorized to use your camera? And I'm like, okay, sure. And this guy was on the phone, walked me through, walked me into my furnace room with my phone camera, <clears throat> opened some, said, okay, go ahead, open that, touch that wire, do that, do that. And I'm like, all right, mm, okay, fine. Yeah, and he said, yep, I can see everything you're doing. And then he said, yep, okay, you're good. Um, I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, you're not gonna come and inspect my furnace. And no, I've just inspected your furnace with you as my, my assistant. I'm like, wow. And then it, it, was, it was a little concerning because it's a furnace is not something, you, I guess you don't wanna mess with. And then I said, so what is this technology you're using? And he said, it's something called, I see what you see. And within like right away, I was on the phone to that company. I was like, I checked out their website, called them up and, and they're like, well, we, do, we only serve large clients. I'm like, no, we need you. We have to, we have to use this. And we've, been, we have, we've had that technology in use for the last uh, few years. And it saved us thousands of kilometers and, and hundreds and thousands of hours of time going on site. I'm like, if this is good enough for my furnace, it's good enough for one of my guys going out to fix a printer. Like you can, so the, the on-site calls were always based on things like, things that you have to physically see. But with that technology, we, we've, we've got that going and it's, it's not, yeah, it's a bit of a secret weapon because I, I mean, we can have people just, in, and during COVID, it was, it was amazing. When, when we did not want to send people on site because it wasn't safe. There were so many things people could do. And, and that's the thing about seeing, seeing possibilities outside of your direct space. So it's always being mindful of, is there some way that this could be, could be automated? And technology is really, a lot of technologies are really about automation and making our jobs easier. And, and uh, so I'll, I'll pause there again to see if anybody has any any oh my goodness, that is so incredible. Thank you so much. I don't know why I'm loving this conversation so much. Am I the only one that's loving this conversation? Because all these stories that I'm hearing, um, as a person who, yes, I embrace technology, but I'm not sort of all out there with it. I'm just inspired. I'm inspired because what I'm what I'm seeing is that in the event of, let's say, a pandemic, in the event of some some experience where we're not able to even travel, travel we can use technologies that will still bring our business, we still keep us in business and also propel our businesses forward. And that's what you're telling me. I, I think that's incredible. And, and Ryan, I do see your question and I do want to sort of um, to get to it. Ryan was asking, um, he was asking, what do you do to keep ahead of the trends? It seems that the black community is caught by surprise with things like AI. Um, and I guess that could, you know, that could go into what you just explained as well, right? Go ahead. So how do you, keeping ahead of the trends, you can't, like, <clears throat> it's about staying. And it's, I mean, I, I don't, like, it's it's a tough one because I'm, I'm, I'm a learner. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm into tech. And I'm, so I, I'm always consuming books and media and staying on top. I, I mean, but it's my job to stay on top of the trends. I mean, there, there might be people who, run businesses like mine who are not as into the trends, but I'm, I see myself also not just as a, as a technologist, but a bit of a social scientist in the sense that I'm very, very mindful of, I'm very wary of technology and I'm, I'm fascinated by it. So I, yes, I follow AI trends. My first job was in AI many, like many, many years ago. And uh, so I stay on, so I stay on top of it. But I think it's really like, it's hard to just kind of consume everything about it. But it's like having, I don't know how to tell someone to develop technical curiosity, right? It's one of the things that we look for on the people that we bring in, uh, that we that I hire. It's like, what do you do? You know, how do you stay on top of things? And I, and it's it's a, it's a tough one. Like, it's just really about just not seeing it. it. Once you stop seeing it as a foreign thing or as a thing that's uh, that's that's outside of or, or for other people or different or whatever, it's, 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 um, and you understand the fundamentals of it. You don't have to know the details of exactly how it works. Like AI, for example, is AI is very, very simple. Like, I mean, I can you, Charles, can you explain what AI is? Can you can you explain that yep. to some of us who don't know what that is? Right. So so there will be a session on AI, which um so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna preempt them by too much, but AI is actually it's yeah it's artificial but it's not really intelligence right so it's it's called artificial intelligence but it's really 
I mean, my, I started my career in AI back in the in the late eighties, and uh, and back then it was just like it's rules. It's really how do you learn or how do you predict? It's really about predicting. So if I were to say identifying an object, for example. How do I, and it's you can go back to the way how kids learn how to, if for people with children or people who've been around children, how kids learn what what an what an object is. So, so for example, something is flat, it has four legs. It's a table, is it? No, it's not a table. Why is it not a table? Because it doesn't have if it if it's got four legs and a back, maybe it's a chair. Or is that table a stoop? So it's it's really what do I know? And it's really a base of knowledge. So AI doesn't can't work without data. So it's really a bunch of information out there and, and us trying to make some reference say, how does this, in, how do, what do I know about this information and how does this information fit together to make an inference, right? And it's, uh, so it's really about using data to, to, to draw conclusions or to, and to make predictions. So if you've seen, a num seen something a number of times, it's like, well, I I'm seeing this and yes, it's, I'm seeing the clouds rolling in, what does that mean? Okay, last time the clouds rolled in, the water came down. Okay, so I think it's going to rain. Yeah. And uh, and okay, so and usually before it rains, it's a, usually there's some wind or there's something. So there's all it's it's really about the data. So there isn't anything that could just magically say this is going to happen, right? Even things that people are playing with now, like ChatGPT, it's based on a whole bunch of data. And the more data you feed something, the better. And what's happening now, the next stage of generation of AI is really where, where it starts using its own inference. Like I've learned this myself. Now I'm, now I'm going to apply what I've, the inferences I've made, put that, put that into the data set and make either further. So it's, it's actually, it appears to be getting, it is getting, appears to be getting smarter, but all it's doing is basically just using data to make more inferences, right? So it's not that, uh, and it's really not that complicated. I mean, I I, I hate saying that because people are like, it's easy for you to say that, but it's really not that that complicated. It's really about what do what do I know, and and if I know that, what can I what can I infer from from that knowledge? So that's all I'll say about AI. But what I will, what I do want to mention though is is having people rethink the way they see their own business, right? Like, what kind of business are you really in? And the thing is, if you see your business differently, you might start seeing the role technology plays in your business differently. So I know that every time one hears a talk, they'll say, what is a tech business, right? Is what is like, for example, everybody's, I'm sure everyone's familiar with say, skip the dishes or yeah. Yeah. DoorDash or Airbnb yeah. or Uber, right? Yeah. And these are all, these are all tech companies because these companies like, I mean, say Uber, for example, one was, you know, you've heard a story. They're a transportation company that owns zero cars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's basic. And, and it's all about, but what is it that you're trying to do? They're trying to get, if you say I'm in the business of moving people from here to there, how can I move people from here to there? As opposed to saying, I run a taxi service. Do I run a taxi service or do I run a transportation service? Right, mm -hmm. like I mean, what what is it? So I'm gonna give you an. Uh, I'm gonna so we have. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna describe one of our one of the, one of the clients that I work with, and people could just <clears throat> guess what they are. Right. So so this is a this is a this is a, a business that has they have clients, and and their clients are, and they do a number of things for their clients. So their clients come in, and their clients have various conditions that they that the company assists them with. And these conditions require that the clients stay there for, you know, in their facility for a period of time. And while the, while they're in the facility, they, the clients are their clients are attended to by by specialists of, you know, different different qualifications. And and these and these specialists they have to be scheduled because they have to be there at various times of day, so they have shifts. And these specialists are also you know, they're accredited. They're they're scheduled, but this 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 uh, business also has investors that they have to report to, and tell how they're doing, how many clients they're serving, and uh, and they're rewarded in certain ways. But they also have bills they have to pay. They have to rent a facility. They have to they have to you know they have to do all kinds of things with real estate. They have to pay their people. They have to you know 
that, so what kind of business are we talking about here, right? Are we talking about a, 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 a boarding school with no. teachers? No. Are, are we talking about a, a rehab center for people with, uh, with addictions? Are we talking about uh, a spa hotel? Are we, what are we talking about? We're not talking about any of those. We're talking about the Calgary Wildlife Rescue Society, right? Mm -hmm. Where they take in over 2,500 animal patients a year. And uh, their business is no, and no different. I mean, the structure of their business is pretty much the same as the structure of any other of any of the other businesses I just described. They, what's different is the, ident the identity of their of their clients or their patients. So when you look at your business, it's not just about looking in looking at that businesses that are that that do exactly what you do. Look at businesses that are structured or do the type of thing you do. And what and what and what you mean by the type of thing you do? It's like yeah. I provide a service. So when I so when I speak to nonprofits and charities, I mean, I when I when I, when I explain to them is that you are service businesses. The fact that you are that your investors are government or the people who, who fund your yeah, that doesn't make a difference. You are you are a service business. And when I look at some business, like, well, I'm in this kind of business. No, you're probably not. You're in, you happen to be serving that. That's why Uber could just go from providing transportation to delivering food because they're like, okay, I, I, I get things from, I get things from point A to point B, whatever those things are, whether they be, be bodies or there be boxes, right? So that's the kind, of, and, and that kind of thinking doesn't just happen overnight. You just go, okay, fine. I'm, I'm just going to rethink, but it's, that's the kind of curiosity and the kind of thinking that, that, that allows people to embrace technology and see tech in, in ways that are more, that's more uh, a, an advantage or a driver than, than something to fear. Because when you start looking at that, it, it's like, okay, how do I rethink my business? How do I do things differently? And, and where can I, where are the lessons? It's like, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, you're, it might, yeah, the, the lessons might not be coming from someone down the street who's your identified competitor. It might be coming from someone who's in a whole different space, right? So that's how I, that, that's something else I want people to start. And it's, it's not, trivial and that's why we're you know there are no slides and you don't have to take notes because you're gonna I want people to walk away not with a headache but just kind of a little bit of a little bit of discomfort about their the way they've been looking at things and some excitement about what's out there and and open eyes about what's you know what's uh, what what they're seeing Absolutely. Now, for those of you who's, uh, who's who are here with us, let me know: Are you excited to embrace technology? Because I certainly am. <laughs> are you excited? Let me hear in the chat. Are you excited to hear? Absolutely. Let me see who that is. That is uh, okay. That's Victoria. Um, is anyone excel else like inspired and excited to implement technology into their business? And just as Charles has mentioned, you don't have to have a technology business to implement technology. Right. We talked about the food. We talked about Uber. We talked about um, DoorDash and, and, and all of that. I mean, you don't have to have a technology business, but you certainly can use technology to scale your business and to operate more efficiently and effectively. OK, so is it just the two of us that are excited then? I mean, <laughs> Donna Chesney. OK. Uh, OK. So Donna's excited. Okay, perfect, perfect. And and would you say, Charles, that it um, virtually about any business can find ways to implement technology? Would you say that is that a fair statement to make? Well, it's 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 really hard to find a business that's not using technology in some way, right? Like yeah. I mean, so if so, yeah, do they use? Yeah, I'm not going to get to even basic technology like like telecommunications. They. they yeah, they'd have a phone. They would have some. They're in, they're engaging with either text messaging or somewhere. They would have some kind of presence online. They would have some. There would be, right? I'll I'll read that afterwards. Go ahead yeah. and finish. So your you know they yeah so they yeah they they're definitely using technology in in different ways. So when I look at they they there are they, there's a there's a whole tech pillar right i mean and somebody else might talk there, there are different places where technology applies like i mean so when we look at it when we look at an organization or a business and how they're using technology we look at 
you know, where they are now. And we look at their, inf their technical infrastructure, which is the hardware, software, networking, whatever. Then we look at their applications that they're running. We look at the at the, their business processes. How do you, what are you trying to do and how you do it in your business? Then, we, you know, so there's the apps, the processes, the infrastructure, and then we look at their data, how they're using data. And if we have more time, I would touch on effective use of data. Then we start looking at their, their social media, how that's, because that's tech, right? The use of mo mobile technologies, their, their how, do, how analytics, and their use of the cloud, and then security, how are they keeping them, their information and themselves safe? In the cyber world, so when you look across that, there is, is a whole spectrum yes, across yes. technology, and and people have so yeah, you're saying that to have a, a business that's completely tech uh, outside Great. of tech would yeah. be would be would be hard, nearly impossible, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a question here from D Holder Charles. Do you find the challenge for Black business owners is apprehension towards adopting the new technology, or is it more a knowledge gap? It's it's both. Yeah. It's 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 a knowledge gap. And I think it's the it's how they how they the ones I've talked to is how they see technology. They see it as a as a foreign thing or something that's that's other that either doesn't apply to them or that they don't have the it's I think the word is actually confidence. It's comfort and confidence more than anything else. It's like they just don't feel they just don't feel that they're equipped. To deal with it, to, to to do this, and whereas they can, you know, there's a whole bunch of other things that they do that's uh, that's way more complicated than than tech. Once you yeah. once you once you start looking at it that way, so I think it's a uh, yeah, it's 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 apprehension, and why and and what makes them apprehensive is because yeah, they just don't know, and they actually think it could blow up, right? It's like. No, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say press that button because like with cybersecurity, there's a whole bunch of things that you should just not do. But but when it comes to that, but even on that note, people should be should know what not to do or know what the dangers are or know, understand the landscape. Right. Perfect. You mentioned something yeah. earlier about in your in, the, in your opening about systemic. I'm not sure if you're able to touch on that a little bit, but we do have a question or a comment from uh, from Milton. He says, Charles, what are your thoughts on utilizing tech to bring about social change? Well, I, I think it's all about bringing about social change. And that's the, and back to the, and back to the systemic nature of the problem with, uh, you know, with, with technology poverty and uh, why we're, you know, why we're left behind and why we were, because we, we were never educated, we were never given the opportunity. And then, and then we have this, you know, this group of people, you know, who just went ahead with tech and, uh, and our people, yeah, we have a lot, we have a, we have a lot of brilliant black people in tech, don't get me wrong. And I, and I think we need to profile them more and they need to engage with the community more to break these barriers down, right? Like, I think uh, that's, that's why it was, you know, it's, it took less than a second to say yes to to this to having this conversation when Stephanie asked me, right? Because it was like, yes, we need to, and it's not about getting on a platform and preaching and talking down to people. It's about people seeing and people representing and people realizing that yes, I, you know, you, we, we can all do this. So, so yes, bringing about social change, absolutely. It's a, it's really about what changes are you trying to make and what and how could technology facilitate that. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's about using technology for communications. It's about using it for connection. It's about using it for engagement. It's about using it for, yeah, it's about doing all the things that you would want to do as a society, but 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 be more tech enabled doing it. That is so amazing. What are some basic technological tools and platforms that we can use in business right now? So when we leave here today, if we, let's say, for instance, we provide a product, we do speaking engagements, whatever the case is, what is a basic, I don't even, what is a basic tool that you think might be useful for, for us? Well, you see, when it comes to tools, like there's like, uh, it's, I'm, I'm hesitant to recommend, to say the to specifics around tools, because it's, they, they're, 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 they're they all, they're, it's about, it's a, it's a comfort issue. It's a matter of yeah. what, what do you what do you what feels good what what what's appropriate for you and what's appropriate for you is what's accessible what's available in your what in your in your language or based on if you have any any special requirements like or or, or what works well with with what else like i mean yeah. 
So I'm, I, I, I spend a lot of time online and I flip flop it. I go between, yeah, this meeting is on Zoom. My next meeting might be, all our internal meetings are conducted on Teams because we're a Microsoft shop. I mean, but then I'm into, I'm in a Google Meet or I'm in some, there's a whole bunch of, even, and that's just for collaboration and for meeting. If I were to be looking at, say, financial financial systems, they're all over the map. If you're looking at case management systems for organized, so it's it's really about, I, I think when it comes to tools, what I my my guidance is, is to spend some time on determining what is it that you want the tool to do. And, uh, and also, what are the capabilities of the tools that you currently have? So do you have something, you already have something that does that? Or what is it, or why am I trying to do that? Like, I mean, because I remember when I was at Suncor, we did an application rationalization exercise where we like, okay, how many cl cloud applications do we have? And we had, yeah. we had only 33 that were officially registered. But when I did my audit, we had over 1,100. So... And there were duplicates. They were doing all kinds, doing the same thing over. So it's it's about trying to figure out what is it that you, what you're trying to do. And back to the question as to what is my business and what are the core functions of my business? So I need to collect money. I need to engage with clients. I need to do this. I need to do that. And when it comes to implementing tools, your tools need to, anything you, any investment you make in technology, you should be thinking about what's that return on that investment. What is the and by return on the investment is what what's the what's the impact to your business? Is it going to is this tool going to help me make money or save money? Is a physical thing? Is it uh, is it going to increase my 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 connection with my with with my with my clients or my community? Yes. Is it going to help me with a compliance? Make me more compliant. Is it going to keep us safer? Is it going to? So there's a number of things that you should be looking at instead of just you know like because what we do we get lost in the oh I need to have this I step back and go why like what's it going to do for me and uh, do I have the do I have the training for it do I have it? Yeah. but it's but it's free but yes but is it how does it tie to the rest of the things I'm doing yeah. like and. Uh, and how how is this really the question really to ask is how does this really help my business? <laughs> and Absolutely. this is not a session about the about business planning and business strategy, but seriously, technology strategy is is part of business strategy. It's like Absolutely. how is this how is this going to help my business? And can I and can I effectively utilize this? Right? The same way you would look at if someone were to offer you some new channel or some new tool or some new piece of equipment in your shop somebody pull up to your door with a brand new piece of equipment and say it's bright and shiny and it does uh it makes noise you like you'd, you'd look at you'd walk around and look at it and go i don't need this but everybody has one yeah but i'm i'm running a barber shop here i really don't need uh, <laughs> that thing or okay i could see how this would fit but not right now Right, because I don't have time right now. I'm focused. So that's how I would I would definitely look at technology. It's treated as something that it's not this strange thing out there. There's a bunch of things, but they are at the most at the end of the day tools. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And I do find that there are some tools that we have currently within our possession that we're using, but we're not maximizing just because we don't know the fullness of how to. How to. Uh, D Holder wants to know, he says, I work in tech, I hope it's a he, I'm not sure if it's a he or she, but I work in tech. Uh, so they certainly find the application in tech extremely exciting. Would like to see another session on how to implement automation to provide efficiencies and building that trust with our business owners. Thank you for that. And, and they did say yeah. thank you, Charles, for the information that you're sharing as well. Okay. So yeah, yeah so that's like that's 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 up to I'll leave that up to BBPA to set that up. Okay, you mean so in the terms yeah. of the future? Yeah, yeah set up another session. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, if you have any other questions, feel free, please, to share with us. Uh, Charles is here; he's dedicated his hour with us um, to share. Stephanie says she's noted that, so thank you so much, Stephanie, for listening in. Um, no, this has been an incredible session. I love all of what you've shared so far. Um, I look forward to hearing more from you, Charles. I really do. Um, do you have, would you say that, um, you know, let's say for the persons that are listening in right now, if they leave with, let's say, maybe just a little bit of interest <laughs> and not really taking it a step forward to learn more, um, what would you recommend? Like, what would you really recommend for those people? Like, how do we really 
because it really comes down to mindsets at the end of the day. How do we instill or um, encourage or inspire that mindset that is um, that really is to, to embrace technology? I, I mean, it sounds like a, a that's a such a loaded question, but yeah. So how do you how do you inspire? Like I that's something that I I don't have the I'll, I'll, I will have to think about that because that is yeah. that will become part of my next challenge. How do I get people to, and it's not how to get them to, but if you were to, if, but I believe that if people start seeing, I mean, everybody is passionate about their business. Yeah. And if people start seeing technology as something that could be an asset to their business, and they start looking at it critically and realizing that this is something I need to learn about. This is something that could be helpful. And this is something that then I, you know, there, there are there are ways or, or start being just observant, you know, like when you engage with a, with a, with a business, like just start seeing the technology around you, seeing what they're, you know, like, oh, oh, they have a, an iPad that they're using for that. Oh yeah. They don't, oh, I could check out online or I could, oh yeah, their inventory is clearly their inventory must be aligned with their, you know, so there's, there are things that you, that, that you would be, a, that, that there are definitely just, I think if people just had their eyes open, and uh, they would start seeing the possible, and it's, and once they and, and everybody's focused, I said on their business. But once they start looking at what what's possible, what's out there, and uh, and who else is doing what, and yeah, and if and if there's a tech session, attend it. You know, Absolutely. attend. I would I would strongly advise by the end of the series, people will be. You know, this session won't change minds, but I, what, I, what I hope the session does is gets people into the other sessions where they where they will be talking very specific about things like cybersecurity, which is really significant around AI, around use of data. I could see those sessions being like, I, I will be attending them because I'm- Thank I you. Have, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. That's a great segue. Uh, number one, just to um, just to commend you for the wonderful work that you're doing. Uh, it's It's been great just to sit with you, to chat with you. Our conversation yesterday, I think we intended to speak for about maybe just a few minutes and I think we we're on the phone for much longer than that, maybe about half an hour. It wasn't too much longer, but in just in terms of all you shared and, and I'm totally just inspired. I don't know about everyone else, but I start, there are a few people who said that they were. Uh, excellent session, inspiring. Okay, I'm glad that you're inspired, Sarah. Totally inspired because as a small business owner, especially understanding how the landscape uh, in doing business has changed dramatic, dramatically and it will continue to change, uh, we need to really, we really need to step it up, especially as Black people. And I think just like with anything else, in order to really thrive, it really begins with a mindset, a mindset to adapt to new changes, a mindset to embrace new technology, even if it seems scary at first. Now for that person, Charles, as we let you go, um, for that person who doesn't know where to start, because as you talked about, this is not necessarily a business planning session, However, technology and implementing technology has very much to do, a lot to do with business planning. For that person who's a small business owner who does not know where to start, who may not even be able to think of ways where they can implement technology, does your organization technology helps? Do you do that? And how can we reach you? So, yeah, we absolutely do that. And this is not a plug for organization. This would be like we are open. Like, I mean, the way we work with organizing, we, yes, please come see, please come reach out. And uh, yeah. we're, we're small, but we are, we're, we're open. And it's, uh, and I will have, I would personally have that conversation with you. Like, I mean, because th 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 this is all I do and I, and I sleep very little. So I'm, so Stephanie has my, like, uh, has my contact information and it's available if anybody wants to reach out with a question, just say, yeah, I'm, I'm inspired or I'm confused or I'm concerned. Yeah. Reach out my, yeah, I'm, I am I'm committed to to helping our people and uh that's why I'm on the board of BBPA and uh I'm also a founding member of the Calgary Black Chambers like I'm serious about uh I I seriously like I mean like I mean black empowerment is going to happen tech is one of the tools for that I'll leave you with that Absolutely well thank you so much Charles if we can just give a round of virtual applause to Mr. Charles Buchanan for from Technology Helps it's been wonderful speaking with you today. Thank you for the nuggets. Thank you for the story about your daughter and just the inspiration that you've shared. It's truly blessed me, honestly. And today I will 
take that information and I will go do some more research in terms of how to implement technology in my own business and the things that I do. So thank you, Charles. Uh, if we could just give some virtual uh, claps to him. Um, and in the meantime, just as, uh, just as Stephanie pointed out, we will be having, this is session one uh, of our tech talk. And Charles was definitely such a blessing to all of us in providing us with the information on why it's important for black entrepreneurs to embrace technology. And we will be having uh, other sessions as well. I think we do have the flyer that will be coming up shortly, but Charles, thank you once again. God bless you. Thanks for, thanks for being with us today. Okay. Thank you. This is a, this is a pleasure. I enjoyed speaking with you. Goodbye. Absolutely. So once again, I do thank each and every one of you for joining us today. And uh, again, we will be having uh, some, we will, we will continue the conversation, uh, but this Saturday we're dealing with a investing for the future. It's a series. And um, this Saturday at community, corn, uh, community space, sorry, it will be unpacking financial trauma. That is a very interesting topic. So unpacking financial trauma will be this Saturday, February the 4th at 10 a.m on uh, community space. And again, you've heard the first session of our tech talks. And uh, next week we will be speaking about demystifying uh, AI and then cybersecurity the following week. So please join us, invite your colleagues, invite your fellow entrepreneurs and, and join us. And, and we're so grateful just to have you each and every week. On behalf of the BBPA, my name is Moi Fung. I thank you for joining us. God bless you. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah. The Business Advisory Implementation Development Service. The Bates program is a major step forward. I believe in the economy of women. I believe in creating our own space, creating our own financial freedom. How do you get business? How do you get financing? How do you get approved for government loans? We have to understand and recognize what the barriers are. And then we work to break those barriers down. We're going to sit with you and we're going to wrap you around the best experts we have. So time is money. The more time you lose, the more money you're losing. Success does leave clues. And if you pick up on those clues, you too can ascend in that same path. As an organization, we've really made specific efforts to help you pivot so that you can thrive.